So we are, we are set for the final stage now. Marcus did a great job in the lab, and uh, Simon put the embryos into the time lapse. They checked with PGS. So the embryo is out of the groups, and it's the elimination game. It's win or go home. So we have to transfer, <laughs> and we have to do this the best we can. So uh, we, have, we have to know a few facts about IVF. One is that uh, pregnancy rates have been increasing since the first advent of IVF over 30 years ago. And the increase is mainly due to both clinical and laboratory improvements, uh, especially for patients uh, who uh, search for IVF clinics and in countries where IVF is not covered, uh, patients do shop around. So they look at the internet, uh, they talk to their uh, relatives, they talk to their friends, and they want to go to the best clinic that will offer them the highest chance of success. So they are shopping around. Therefore, I believe that small increases in success rates count when you treat the patient. And when the patients are asked why they discontinue IVF treatment, besides the fact that some patients are not content with what you do at your center and they change places, most of the patients do not further pursue IVF because they have not been successful. So success is the most important aspect of this treatment. So this is a model. If you look, if you uh, take a blastocyst, a top quality blastocyst, and if you accept that the implantation rate is about 40%, after one transfer cycle, 60% of the patients will not be pregnant. And if you go down all the way to four embryo transfer cycles, there will be still about 15% of the patients who do not achieve a pregnancy. So why does it not implant? So we have a beautiful embryo, a beautiful blastocyst, we have a very nice looking endometrium, and the embryo does not just implant. It could be by chance. As I showed you in the previous slide, the chances of implantation, despite you with the recurring cycles, is still not that high. There may be factors due to the embryo, as uh, Simon just pointed out. So the embryo may look beautiful, but something <clears throat> may have happened during the journey until the blastocyst stage, or it may be due to other factors. However, we do know that we don't know why a normal and a genetically competent blastocyst does not implant. So we do not acknowledge most of the factors that are responsible for failed implantation. So some of, some of my patients, this was back like 10 or 15 years ago, the patient used to ask, don't you have anything, doctor, that you put into this transfer medium so the embryo would stick in there and it would not move and I would get pregnant? Well, we do have that now and it's a glue. It's embryo glue. So this glue has been uh, shown to improve implantation rates, improve pregnancy rates, and it has no adverse events, and it is also claimed to be associated with more babies being born. Best hospitals use it and even hopeless patients have got pregnant with it. So the question is, does it live up to the hype? So what is the evidence behind this glue story? So basically what glue is, it, is, it contains the molecule that uh, David is in love with, and that is hyaluronan. It's a special medium for embryo transfer which eases the embryos adhesion to the mucous membrane of the uterus via the use of biochemical signals. We should have a physiological rationale when we use a molecule. And uh, it's a glycosaminoglycane, and it's a component of the ECM, the extracellular matrix of the reproductive tract. It contributes to tissue hydrodynamics and movement and proliferation of cells and for many years, it was thought to be a molecule just remaining in the ECM until later on they discovered 
the CD44 receptors on the cells where hyaluronan would be able to act. So if you ever wondered what your ECM looks like, this is what it is. So it's a complex array of network of proteins, glycosaminoglycanes, molecules, uh, and this is what is in between your cells. So you have your hyaluronan molecules, you have the receptors for the hyaluronan, and it may act on its own receptor on, the own, on, on this cell, or it may act in a paracrine manner to, on to the other cell. So it regulates what is going on here, besides, of course, other molecules. And hyaluronan is so abundant in the body, it's practically everywhere. And it is basically one of the major components of the secretions of the reproductive tract. It increases in concentration dramatically on the day of implantation. It's found in high concentrations in the fallopian tube during uh, fertilization, and receptors for hyaluronan has been shown to be expressed on oocytes and also on early stage embryos. This is a study that was done almost 10 years ago, and what it shows that this is staining for hyaluronan, and this over here with the intense staining is the mid-secretory phase. So this is the phase when the embryo will implant into the uterus. This is the proliferative phase. You see very scent uh, coloration over here where hyaluronan is practically absent, but it is very abundant when, at the time when the embryo will implant into the uterus. So obviously, after this molecule became available, many studies have been done. And this is our study that was published back in uh, 2008 on the effect of embryo glue on implantation and pregnancy rates, both in patients undergoing day three and day five transfers. And it's a prospective randomized study. And uh, so far, I believe it's the biggest study of its nature. So we included approximately 640 patients in each group. This is the uh, approximate female age, the number of embryos that have been transferred, seven years of infertility, and most patients had a previously failed cycle. And these are the indications for treatment down below. And what we were able to show as an o uh, overall in all of the uh, patients, you can see that when we used embryo glue in the transfer medium, this was associated with a significantly higher uh, implantation rate. And this was true for both day three, cleavage stage, and day five, blastocyst stage transfers. And also, if, you looked at, if we looked at the clinical pregnancy rate, we were able to observe the same thing. Overall, again, it was statistically significantly different. And when we uh, looked at the <coughs> subgroups with patients who, were, who had poor prognostic factors like previous implantation failures, patients who were older than 35, patients who had poor quality embryos. You, as you can see over here, in each and every subgroup, embryo glue was associated with higher clinical pregnancy rates. And then we calculated the number to, needed to treat. And if you take, for example, a woman of uh, 35 years and older, or a woman who had recurrent implantation failures prior to that IVF cycle, you will see that the number to treat to get one additional pregnancy is only four and seven in these two groups. This is an extremely good number if you're looking at a certain uh, intervention, the number needed to treat. If you want to use it in all of your patients, you have to use it in 17 patients to get one additional pregnancy uh, with the use of embryo glue. What this data lacked was the live birth rates. And then we went on, and uh, Bashak Balaban, my embryologist, presented this uh, in the ESHRE meeting in 2011. Uh, we went back to the data, and we contacted the patients to fetch out the live birth rates. As, as you can see over here, overall, day three transfers, day five transfers, live birth rates were also increased with the use of embryo glue. So what does the literature show us? As I said, this is the biggest study of its kind, but there, has been many, there have been many studies in the literature, and these were all 
uh, taken together into account in a Cochrane review that was published only last year. So it's a quite recent review. And what this review actually looked at, uh, looked at the embryo transfer medium or the culture medium where uh, the culture medium was either enriched with hyaluronan in low concentrations, high concentrations, or no hyaluronan at all. And as you can see over here, in all of the categories, the use of hyaluronan was associated with increased pregnancy and implantation rates. And uh, there were no adverse effects with the use of hyaluronan, as you can see over here, but the uh, quality of evidence due to the fact that most of the studies that were included in the Cochrane analysis were retrospective in nature was only moderate. There were only a few randomized studies that were included. And also when we look at the live birth rates that were reported in the Cochrane review, again, there was a significant increase in uh, live birth rates. And uh, for non-donor oocytes, uh, again, the live birth rates were significantly, uh, cl the clinical pregnancy rates, I'm sorry, were significantly increased. There was only very uh, few patients included in the data where donor oocytes were used. As you can see, the numbers are extremely small. There appeared to be no difference there, but I believe this will change uh, if the number of patients included were to increase. So a few mm -hmm. studies were published after this Cochrane data. Uh, one study coming from Hungary, it is a RCT, a double-blind study, included a fair number of patients that showed no significant differences. However, when we looked at the study, it had uh, serious shortcomings in terms of randomization, in terms of the patients that were included in the study were also included in the previous pilot study, and uh, there was no allocation concealment and many other uh, many, many other shortcomings of this RCT. And another RCT, uh, another retrospective study, two retrospective studies, one coming from China and, uh, and the other one coming from Iran, did not show any significant difference, but these were, again, in retrospective in nature, small number of embryo transfers, and there were also significant shortcomings in the study designs. Uh, in Japan, what they did was they looked at over 10,000 embryo transfers in 4,000 patients, and these were, the, uh, these were data that were presented in several meetings from 20-some uh, from Japanese clinics, and uh, they looked at both fresh transfers and cryo embryo transfers, and again, they were able to show that implantation rates, pregnancy rates for both uh, fresh and for cryotransfers were increased with the use of embryo glue. So what I can say is that the best available evidence indicates that embryo glue increases clinical pregnancy and live birth rates in patients undergoing both fresh and frozen embryo transfers. Poor prognosis subgroups may particularly benefit from the use of embryo glue. As I have shown, the number needed to treat is very small four and seven for patients over 35 and patients who had previous implantation failures. It's very simple to use and it only marginally affects the cost of the cycle. However, we still need further studies uh, for immediate and long-term infant outcomes. Thank you.